I've taught about the founding of the American Republic for 30 years. And I don't think there's anything that I've heard more in class that I've heard that disturbs me than students coming in and telling me that the three-fifths clause of the Constitution of the United States says that black people are three-fifths of a human being. I've heard that from students, the undergraduate level, graduate level. And usually when I ask them, where did you hear that? It's a high school teacher. Or sometimes it was one of my colleagues in the Department of History at East Carolina University. But it's nonsense. It's pure bull. And that's what I want to talk about in this video. First off, the first thing I would do to students was to read the clause, because the clause doesn't say that black people count as three-fifths. It says that it doesn't even use the word slaves, but other people is referencing our slaves. Slaves count as three-fifths. If you're a free black, you count at 100%. So if we're counting slaves at three-fifths, they're not counting blacks as three-fifths, which is usually what it says, that black people are three-fifths of a human being. That's not what it said at all. The other obvious problem is, why was that there? And here you have to actually use a little critical thinking, which isn't often employed in American universities, not even by some of the faculty, unfortunately. Think about it for a second. What were they arguing about with the Three-Fifths Clause? They're arguing about the apportionment of representation for the Congress of the United States and, by extension, the Electoral College. The more people you have, the more representation you get, the more House seats you get in your state. All right? More people, more representation, more power. Keep that in mind. Okay, you're a slave state. You're Virginia. How do you want to count your slaves? As three-fifths? No. You're a racist white Southerner. You want your slaves to count at 100%, because then you'll have more representation and more political power. If you're a Northerner in a state that's outlawed slavery, say Pennsylvania, where I was born, how would you count slaves? How would you want slaves counted? You'd want them counted as 0%, because you don't want the Southerners to get extra representation for the slaves, who they are always telling you aren't people, aren't human beings. They're property. They're like horses. They're like cabins. They're like warehouses. Warehouses don't get representation. If I live up north and I have 10 horses, they don't get representation. They're property. Why should a Southerner's slaves be counted for representation unless they're people? And the Southerner tells me they're not. So if you just think about it, you don't even have to get into deep political thinking or thought or theory or anything. Just think about the logic of a three-fifths clause. Who would want slaves counted at 100%? Southerners, slave owners, in slave states. Who would want slaves counted at 0%? Northerners. So we don't have a three-fifths clause because racists wanted to count slaves as lesser forms of a human being. It doesn't have anything to do with that. If the racists in the country, the outright racists, the institutional racists, the Southerners, running the slave states, had had their way, we would have had 100% representation of slaves. There would be no three-fifths three clause in the federal constitution as originally written. It was later eliminated with, I think it's the 14th Amendment. That's the reality. You don't have to get into conspiracy theories or political things. You just have to look at this rationally. If you're a Southern racist slave owner, you want your slaves counted at 100%. So where did they come up with three-fifths as a compromise? Before the Constitutional Convention, back during the days of the Articles of Confederation. There was no representation. Each state could send as many people as they wanted to Congress because it didn't matter. You got one vote. You sent five people, you got one vote. You sent 13 people, you got one vote. You sent three people, you got one vote. There were times when some states, and the states had to pay for their own delegation, didn't send anybody. There were times when there was nobody there from certain states under the Articles of Confederation. 
There was no representation beyond that. Now, what the Articles of Confederation did was they would levy assessments on the states. For example, manpower. If they needed a thousand men for an army and a given state had 15% of the population, they would have to send 150 men. You had 10% of the population, you'd have to send 100 men. So the states would have to outfit these men, uniforms, guns, equipment, supplies, wagons, horses, all that costs money. So the southern states didn't want the slaves counting because that meant they'd have to send more people. The other levies that Congress would assess were taxation. Congress needed money. They had no power of direct taxation. They don't get that until the federal constitution. So they would levy assessments on the states, and they would do that taking into account wealth and property. What are one of the big chunks of wealth and property in the southern slave states? Slaves. So basically, if you counted slaves as property and figure, put their wealth into the equation, a state like Virginia would have to pay more taxes. So basically what the southern states wanted under the Articles of Confederation was to not count slaves as people or property because they didn't want to send as many troops when there was an assessment for troops and they didn't want to send as much money when there was an assessment for basically what you could call taxes. So they didn't want slaves counted as anything. They wanted them counted at zero. And keep in mind, in the federal debate, constitutional debate, they want them counted at 100%. Conversely, if you live in a northern state, you want the southerners to pay at 100% rate for their slaves, which they claim are property. They must be counted for wealth. If they're 100% and there's an assessment being made, Virginia is going to have to pay more in taxes and Pennsylvania will pay less in taxes because Pennsylvania doesn't have all these slaves. So what did they do? How did they bridge this? They came up with a compromise. They count the slaves at three-fifths. Now, as it turned out, it never was fully approved because under the Articles of Confederation, all 13 states had to approve it. Each state had a veto power, and two of the states wouldn't approve it. So it never was passed. But it was only a couple of years before, I think it was like three or four years before the federal constitution, they had come up with this three-fifths compromise where we'll count slaves at 60% of the whole. In, under the articles, it was with reference to sending troops and, and most especially paying the tax assessment. So when they get to Philadelphia in 1787 and they run into this same problem, the Southern states want slaves counted at 100%. The racists want black slaves counted at 100% as people. Keep in mind, the racists want slaves counted at 100%. It's the states who do not have slavery anymore who want them counted at 0%. Because they say, this is a hypocrisy. We're gonna, you want us to count them as people so you get more seats in the House of Representatives and more electoral votes. But legally, you're treating them as property. You can't have it both ways. So we're not going to buy that. So what do they do? What do they fall back on? The old three-fifths compromise from the period of the Articles of Confederation. It's that simple. Somebody says, well, why don't we do this? We were ready to do it a couple years ago. 11 of the 13 states approved it. Let's go with a three-fifths compromise, the 60% compromise again. And that's what they did. And that's why we have the three-fifths clause in the original version of the federal constitution. Nothing to do with racism. I mean, it has something to do with racism in a sense that Southerners want these people counted as people for representation, but they don't want them to be able to vote. They want to treat them like property, but they don't get them counted like people. Whereas under the Confederation, they wanted them treated not as property, but as people, because then they'd have to pay more taxes. So basically, you have all this hypocrisy going on in the South. But ultimately, when you get to 1787 and you get the drafting of the Constitution, the people who wanted blacks counted at 100% were the racist slave owners. 
It wasn't the Southerners who wanted slaves counted at three-fifths of a human being, as it's often put. I, I don't know how many times this, I've heard this from students. They go, black people were three-fifths of a human being. The Constitution says that. It doesn't say that. And, and if you look at the people who thought black people weren't human beings, they're the ones who wanted them counted at 60%, not 0%. If the Northerners had had their way, they would have been counted at 0%. Not because Northerners thought blacks were nothing. Free blacks in the North were counted at 100%. I mean, it's really not rocket science, the whole thing with the three-fifths clause. But I don't know how many times I've students come in and Dr. Palmer, you know, your three-fifths clause, blah, 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 blah. Who told you that? Oh, uh, Professor so-and-so in his class last week. And then somebody else say, yeah, yeah, I was there too. That's what, that's what he said. You know, this is why people are so misinformed in this country. You know, it's an old Sicilian saying, the fish rots from its head. Intellectually speaking, the head of the American fish is higher education, and it is rotting. That's my take. What's yours? Let me know in a comment. Like the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification button so you know when I post new videos. Share the video with your friends. And until the next time, keep fighting.